are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. Now, we're going to be talking about some things a little different today. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm going to title this, I guess, Off the Cuff Stuff. You know, have you ever read things in the Bible that you thought, well, you know, this doesn't really sound right, but yet it's in the Bible, and uh, I, we could call it rightly dividing the Word. You know, that's what Paul said to Timothy, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word. You know, you could take the Bible and prove anything on earth you want to prove if you take it out of context and do not use it in the context. So I want us to uh, get into the Word of God and talk about some things. Let's go to Matthew 13th chapter, first of all. And uh, we find here where he talks about the parable of the sower. Uh, Jesus is telling the parable of the sower, and uh, he talks about the sower soweth the Word. Now look at verse 19. Uh, well, let's start verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Now, if we uh, take that and go over and compare it to what Mark said in his teaching concerning the parable of the sower. Now, you understand <clears throat> that Mark and Matthew record the same thing. We really should have read Mark's account first, but uh, Mark puts it this way. Verse 14, now this is Jesus speaking. <clears throat> this is the way, pardon me, this is the way Jesus said it, or the way Mark understood that Jesus said it. Now, I want you to see why sometimes it's good, you know, all the time, it's good for you to read both accounts, or if there's three accounts of the same thing, read it and study it and analyze it. Because here's what Mark says, the sower soweth the Word. Now, he's quoting Jesus. This is how Mark understood it. And these are they by the wayside where the Word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the Word that was sown in their hearts. Now, let's, let's think about that for a minute, what Mark said. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in the heart. Now, if that is the truth, then there really wouldn't be much need of us hearing the word of God because Satan's just going to come steal it from us. Now, see, that's why we need to study to show ourselves approved. So you could read that and say, well, you know, Mark says it, that Jesus said that if you ever study the Bible, if you ever hear the Word, Satan's going to steal it from you. Now, let's go back and read what Matthew said. And when anyone heareth the Word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not. Now, folks, that makes a world of difference. There's a difference in hearing it, and there's a difference in understanding it. Now, some of you have probably said this. I know I've said this at times. Uh, you know, I don't understand all I know about this. See, we, we have a lot of things that we don't understand all we know about. We know certain things that the Bible says, but sometimes we don't understand all we know about it. And that's the reason we need to, uh, to dig into it and find out what it said. Now, let's, let's go ahead and read Mark's account here uh, a little further and said, These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Now, what he's doing here, Jesus uh, always taught this way. I don't know whether you've noticed this or not, but you see, I was a farmer. I farmed for 29 years before I went into the ministry. And I guess I can understand some of these things a little uh, better maybe than some others or quicker because I understand planting a seed, reaping a harvest. Now, in this parable of the sower, Jesus is taking natural things and showing you how spiritual things work. Now, one of the problems in the religious world is that uh, people religiously tend to separate the spiritual from the natural. And Jesus never did do that. He always would take the natural things and show you how spiritual things work. He'd talk about sowing seed and reaping a harvest. 
uh, and planting a seed. Now watch this. Here he's dealing with a parable. Now a parable, you know, is a parallel. You, you give a natural truth that gives you spiritual insight. Now there are four types of soil that he's talking about here are four conditions of the soil. Now there's only one type of soil or one condition of the soil that brought forth fruit. And it was, we'll find out about it. Let's go ahead and read it. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan cometh immediately to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. In other words, the wayside soil is what we call the turn row. That's where you turn the tractor around out on uh, the turn row, so to speak. It's a space, an empty space at the end of the field, and it gets real hard and packed, and it's not conducive to bringing forth uh, fruit because uh, you need to stir the ground and get it loosened up so that the plant, whatever you planted, can take root. However, it can produce there, but it's really hard for it to come up. Now listen to what he said. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. In other words, he's saying if you don't prepare the ground, the indication is that Satan will come immediately to steal the word. Now some of you have been wondering why in the world is it that every time I begin to, to get a hold of the word of God and find a new truth and, and find in the word of God where it says, Give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men shall give unto my bosom. And if I sow bountifully, I'll reap bountifully, and my God will make all grace abound toward me, that I having all sufficiency of all things will abound to every good work. And then you get all excited and give more than you, you've been giving. And guess what? Satan comes to steal the word. Well, that's what he said would happen. But if you understand it, he can't steal it from you. That's what I want you to see. See, Matthew caught something Mark didn't catch. Matthew said, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. Now, the wicked one doesn't only mean Satan. It means wicked people will talk you out of it. And I'll go a little further than that. Some, some well-meaning Christians and, and, and unbelieving church members will talk you out of it if you don't know why you're doing it. So if you understand it, it makes a difference when you understand the Word of God. So if you're not understanding it and don't understand why you're doing certain things. Now, you see, when you understand that God always did miracles through Jesus' ministry, you find that He always did miracles of like substance. In, the, in John, the third chapter, when there's a marriage in Cana of Galilee, you know, they run out of wine. Well, they came to Jesus, and uh, they said, you know, there's no wine. Uh, well, he, one thing I want to bring in here is what his mother said. It's the only thing in the Bible that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is listed as saying. In other words, the only statement in the Bible recorded that she said. She said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Now, folks, I'm telling you, that's the way you get a miracle. If you just find out what Jesus said and do it, you can get a miracle in your life. Now, what he told them to do didn't sound very logical at all. He says, get to water pots and fill them with water. Hey, we don't want water, man. We want wine or grape juice, you know. But he said, get to what? There were six water pots there, uh, which was for the purifying of the Jews. It contained two or three firkins apiece. They were earthen vessels. And he said, fill them to the brim with water, H2O. Now, notice he didn't tell them to go get six buckets of sand and we're going to turn it into wine. No, he did a miracle of like substance. He took H2O, or liquid, and turned it into another liquid, a miracle of like substance. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is because that if you have need of finances, you plant a seed of finances. You, you have need of, of prayer, you pray for somebody. You have need of healing, you pray for, uh, lay hands on somebody else. In other words, miracle of like substance. You plant what you need. Have you ever noticed that a farmer's out there planting? What's he planting? He's planting what he wants. He's planting what he needs. Why is he planting corn? Because he wants more corn. <laughs> he plants cotton because he wants cotton. So it's miracle of like substance. 
And we're talking about the Word now. Sowing the seed of the Word. Miracle of like substance. <clears throat> now, notice what he goes on to say here. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the Word, immediately receive it with gladness. Now, uh, being a farmer, I understand that when you plant a seed real shallow and see on stony ground, you don't have much earth there, so you, it's planted shallow. Now, that's good in one way because if you get a little shower of rain, you got the seed shallow, it'll get enough moisture to cause it to come up. But the problem is that when, it, when the sun comes out, it's going to get hot and it's going to scorch and it's going to dry it out. In other words, if it only rains uh, and uh, moistens the ground a uh, half inch deep and your seed is, is like a quarter of an inch or half an inch deep, it'll come up quicker. But you see, it may have dry dirt below the seed. And when that root comes out, when that sprout comes out and goes down and hits that dry ground, it's going to wither and die. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. He said, they have no root in themselves. They received it with gladness. In other words, it came up quicker. It produced in their life quicker. But they did not have root in themselves, have no root in themselves. In other words, they didn't understand why they were doing what they did. They didn't get the stones out. In other words, stones are taking moisture from the soil. Now, that soil will work just as hard to make that, that rock produce as it will a seed, but there's no life in that rock, but there is in the seed. So it'll absorb moisture. That rock will absorb moisture. It'll take part of the moisture out. Then the sun will heat the rock and dry it out more. So it causes the seed to dry up and the sprout to die, and therefore it produces no fruit. But, you see, they received it with gladness. In other words, uh, they heard the word and it sounds so great. Well, you can just have what you say, or if you give, it'll be given unto you. Well, that is true, but that's not all the truth. So you have to get the whole thing together and understand why you're doing it. You keep doing it regardless of whether it seems to be working or not. Now, see, we're talking about how the sower sows the word and, and continues to water it with the word. And we're in uh, Mark, the fourth chapter. I want to go ahead and read here in the, where, where well, let's, let's read the 16th verse again. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, have no root in themselves, so endure for a time and afterwards when affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake. Now, this tells you why that people that say, you heard people say this, some of you said it yourself, well, I'm going to try this. Well, you're going to fail if you're just going to try it. Well, somebody said, Brother Cap, why am I going to fail if I try it? Because right here is what Jesus said. He's telling you. He said they have no root in themselves. They have no understanding that this is a principle of God and it will work, but there's a lot of time that it, times in your life that it'll look like it's not working, that it's not going to work because the enemy comes to try to keep you from acting on the Word and doing the Word, so he's going to make it look like it's not going to work and get you to quit. They have no root in themselves, no understanding of it. They have no deep root into, see, they only have a formula. They just know that you plant. Yeah, but you've got to know how to plant it, how deep to plant it. You've got to dig deep. You've got to put it down in the soil. You've got to prepare the soil. And the soil in this parable is the heart of man. Now, what we're talking about rocks, that take away the moisture. You've got, to get the, you've got to get things out of your heart that won't produce. Rocks won't produce. You've got to get those things out. Now, what are some of the rocks? Well, you hear people say this. Well, now, I'll just tell you. You see, uh, sometimes God will heal you, and sometimes He won't. Sometimes He'll make you sick. Hey, that's a rock. That's a thorn in the ground. You better get it out, or it's not going to work for you, because you're going to be offended at the Word. Now, see, they endured for a while, but when persecution and affliction came, it riseth. Now, notice why it came, why persecution and affliction came. For the Word's sake. In other words, to get the Word out of you. So that's why it's so important to understand that, uh, you, to understand what you're going through. You've got to understand that this is a principle of God, and it will work, but you have to continue doing it when it seems like it's not working. 
I had an individual say to me one time, said, you know, I've, I've, you know, I know I should be tithing, and said, we've tried to tithe. You know, tithe is 10%. The Bible teaches that. Uh, a tenth belongs to God. And uh, said, we've tried to tithe, but every time we try to tithe, every time we give, uh, try to tithe, why, you know, something happens to where we, we just can't make it. We just have to quit. We've tried it. He said, can you help me? I said, I believe I can. I believe I can help you. It won't work if you try it. It works when you do it. Now, Satan comes immediately to take away the Word. Why does he come? Why does this persecution and affliction arise? Now, the word affliction, it, it means a multitude of things. It could be uh, sickness. It could be disease. Not necessarily so. It means the pressures of life. The pressures of life come against you. And uh, persecution, uh, all kinds of things can come. And why did it come? For the Word's sake. In other words, to get the Word out of you. And immediately it says they were offended. Now, why were they offended? Because they heard the Word and un did not understand it. They didn't understand it. I had a man to uh, call me, the friend of mine. He, he got a hold of the Word and began to uh, confess the Word of God and began to do some of these things, give more and, and pay his tithes and this, that, and the other, you know. And uh, he'd call me and he'd say, uh, uh, Brother Caps said, I'm doing what the Bible said to do. I'm doing everything you said to do in your book. I'm doing, the, I'm doing that. But it, why is it not working? I said, well, now, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm doing that. I said, it's working. He said, no, it's not working. I said, what makes you think it's not working? Well, he said, I can plainly see. <laughs> I said, oh, you live by sight, not by faith. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. You see, once you know what the Word says, it's going to work that way. But you have to be a doer of the Word. It won't happen just because you try. Because the enemy is going to try to get it out of you because that's his only hope. If he can't get that Word out of you and keep you from operating on the Word of God, he knows that you're going to get beyond where he can stop you. So he comes immediately, and that's what Jesus said. He comes immediately to take away the Word if you understand it or not. Well, to make a long story short, this fellow, uh, you know, uh, I was long distance. I knew he wanted to slap me, but he couldn't because it's long distance, you know. But, but I had to get to him that he just keep doing the Word of God. Just keep on doing it. Well, I saw him some months later. Uh, in fact, it was several months later in a convention uh, out on the East Coast. And he showed up and, and uh, walked up behind me and tapped me on the shoulder. And uh, I turned around and he said, Glory to God, it's working. Now, you see, if it hadn't have been for some encouragement over the phone uh, and uh, encourage him to just keep on doing the Word, because, see, it takes time for, for things to produce. Now, being a farmer, I know you don't plant. I was a cotton farmer and rice farmer and so on. I didn't plant cotton one day and harvest it the next. Didn't harvest it the next week. It took months for it to develop. So, see, it takes a process. This is a process. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. Now, notice that, that he goes on. But, but let, me, let me finish that. I'm about to get ahead of myself. But he said, glory to God, it's working. And um, then he, he told me that he continued to do the Word of God and, and things changed in his life. So it takes time to turn, turn some things around. Um, one thing about it, you're going to have to change some things we're saying, and I think that's one of his problems. See, he was saying it's not working, and it wasn't working. As long as he's saying it's not working, it's not working seemingly for him. But you've got to get people off of saying what the devil says. You see, now who said it wasn't working? You know God didn't say it wasn't working. God said to be a doer of the Word, you'll be blessed in your deeds. So it must have been the enemy that told him it's not working. So Mark eleven twenty three tells you that you can have what you say if you believe, if you doubt not in your heart, and if you believe what you say and will come to pass, he shall have. What's he going to have? going to have what he saith. Well, he was having what he said, wasn't he? He was saying it wasn't working, it wasn't working. Well, when he started changing his word. You see, you've got to change your mouth. Uh, a lot of Christians, one of their problems, or the greatest problem of many Christians, is one inch below their nose. 
Just measure down one inch. You come right to your mouth. It's your mouth. You're going to have to start saying what God said if you're going to get it to work for you. Because what you say is either producing faith or fear. Faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. Fear cometh by hearing the words of the devil. And if you're confessing the words of the devil, if you're saying it's not working, I prayed, it's not working out, things are getting worse, guess what you're hearing? You're hearing your voice say exactly opposite of what God said. And if you turn that around, you see, James said it this way. James said we put bits in a horse's mouth and we turn about the whole horse. Well, now, stop and ask yourself, what does bits do to a horse's mouth? Well, it puts pressure on his mouth. Now, if you don't like the way things are going in your life, put a little pressure on your mouth. I mean, take the Word of God and put some pressure on your mouth. Jesus, Jesus said this in Matthew 15. He said, Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man. You see, they'd criticized his disciples because they ate with unwashed hands. He said, Not that that goeth into the mouth defileth the man. It's that which cometh out of the mouth that defileth the man. Now, see, talking things, you hear people say all kinds of things. Well, I can already see. By the end of the year, we're not going to have the money to make the payment on our house. We're going to lose our house, sure as the world. Yeah, you probably are because you got the words of the enemy in your mouth. You're speaking exactly contrary to the Word of God. The Bible said, Give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. And my God, make all grace abound towards you. But you're saying, I can already see it. See, you have spoken words of doubt and unbelief until you formed an image in your mind of failure. And you're going to fail as long as you continue in that line. But see, James said in James chapter 3, put bits in a horse's mouth, you turn that whole horse around. So if you don't like the way your life is going, just put a little pressure on your mouth. You can turn it around. Get God's Word in your mouth. Say what God said, and it'll change the situation. Now, you see, here's, he goes on to say, And these are they that are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Now, other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Now, how did these other things enter in? Now, in the sixth chapter of, of Matthew, Jesus said, Take no thought by saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewith shall we be clothed? Take no thought by saying. Now, he tells you a great faith secret there, or a great secret concerning this matter right here. The way these things enter in is through your mouth. Now, Matthew 15, you can read it. He says, Not that which cometh out of the mouth defileth the man, that which, I mean, that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth defileth the man. In other words, he's talking about the food you eat, it's not defiling you. He said, It's that words you're speaking that defile you. Well, he said, Take no thought by saying. He tells you how you take thoughts. The devil put thoughts in your mind. You can't keep the devil from putting thoughts in your mind. But let me tell you something. Those thoughts of unbelief and doubt will die unborn unless you speak them. But once you speak those things, you have taken the thought. That's the way you take thought. You take it. And those things, that's the way they enter in. You speak them in there. Paul said it this way in, in Romans 10. He said, the word is nigh you. It is even in your mouth and in your heart. What's in your mouth, what you speak out of your mouth will eventually get in your heart, and that's the way these things entered in, and they choke the Word, and it becomes unfruitful. That's why it hadn't worked for some of you, because you, you have, it choked the Word, the thoughts that you took. You allowed other things to enter in. Stay with the Word of God. Keep on doing it. It will work. It's the principle of the Bible, and it works when you work it. Hallelujah. I don't know whether it helps you or not, but I'll talk myself happy. Praise God. Now, before we leave the broadcast, let me uh, uh, talk about the uh, offer this week. We have a tape offer. It's, it's number 2241, and it's called, What Are Doctrines of Devils? Now, <laughs> you might say, well, what in the world is this all about, doctrines of devils? Well, let me read you something that the Apostle Paul said over here. Uh, in 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, we find that Paul said, 
now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, now wouldn't you say we're in the latter times? That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving to them um, that believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Now, doctrines of devils, uh, he's talking about here seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils are not uh, preached by devils. You know, if a devil came up and started preaching some doctrine to you, you'd know it's wrong. But uh, what you need to realize is that there's people teaching that, uh, well, you know, God doesn't heal anymore. And uh, they say, well, that, you know, they, well, yeah, one, one pastor said to a man that went to a, a meeting, healing meeting, got healed, he was paralyzed, got hands laid on him, healed by the power of God, walked home, his pastor come to visit him the next day. And, and, and the man got up and let the pastor in, and he was astonished that the man was healed. I mean walking, hadn't walked in years. And the pastor said, what happened to you? Oh, I went down to that healing meeting or that where there's preaching down there healing, and I got healed. The pastor sat out and said, now, now brother, he said, let me tell you, that, that healing business is of the devil. God doesn't heal anymore. Sit there and talk to the man for about 10 minutes or maybe 15 minutes. And before the man, uh, before the pastor left, the man was totally paralyzed and couldn't walk. The pastor had to let himself out. Talk the man right out of his healing. Now, folks, that's what I call the doctrine of devils. Now the pastor, bless his dar, darling heart, the man didn't know he was preaching doctrines of devils, but he was. And uh, there's a lot of other things. People say, well, speaking in tongues is of the devil. No, it's not. It wasn't in the book of Acts. That's offer number 2241, two audio cassettes, $10. We have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. It's two cassette series called Doctrines of Devils. It'll help you get your mind straightened out concerning some of the things that happened in the Bible. Well, bless God, I'm excited about it. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that Jesus is coming soon. We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.